Welcome back, everybody. Games, uh, GameStop shares are soaring once again this morning, adding more than 170 uh, percent just since yesterday morning. Another meme stock soaring along with GameStop is AMC. AMC is up 187 percent for the week to date. And of course, it's only Tuesday. Joining us right now with more on this is Jay Clayton. He is former SEC chair and a CNBC contributor. And Jay, we've been kicking this around this morning. I got a whole lot of different takes on this. First of all, the short sellers didn't learn their lesson last time around. Second of all, retail investors are back with a vengeance, but you can't really call this investing either. Um, these are massive swings. As a former SEC chair, what do you think when you look at all of this? Well, it, it bothers me. It bothers me on, on many levels. I, I think your last guess got it right. It, it's, it's a lot closer to gambling than it is to trading, and it's certainly not investing. And, you know, is a, is a tweet really investment advice? I think we've learned over the last five, six, seven years that a tweet is really never this investment advice. This is a tweet that advice. never even mentions that the companies involved. I mean, that's what's so phenomenal, to see massive moves like this when really it was just the implication that he may be setting up and taking notice. That's the tweet we're talking about. Yeah, and, and we, can, we can debate whether that's, you know, uh, let, let's put it this way, whether it's legal or illegal or it's manipulation or not. But I have a question for Keith Gill, which is, why not tell people why you did it? Why not come on the show and say, are you saying that, that, that GameStop is now a good investment opportunity? Um, you know, we don't know. What we know is that it triggered uh, what I would say is euphoric and speculative buying uh, among the retail community, which is never a great thing. So it, this was a really interesting proposition put up by Matt Levine from Bloomberg yesterday. Mm -hmm. Just what about the idea if Keith Gill, Roaring Kitty, who tweeted this, were to have gone on and bought options ahead of time, tweeted this and then made a lot of money based on everybody going into this and the price going up. Is that illegal? It's not insider trading. It's not insider trading. That's 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 clear. Unless he, and he's trading on his own information. That's why it's not in, insider trading. But is this is this something that we should be tolerating in our markets? You know, whether it's legal or illegal, I don't think so. And that's why I say, why doesn't he, you know, but okay, what does that mean very, not to tolerate? Was, so the idea I would think as you look at this more in the context of market manipulation, mm -hmm. right? And the question is, are you allowed to manipulate the market? People, by the way, publish things all the time and they say, hey, I like this stock. And they, you know, hope that other folks follow them. Is that market manipulation? Gen generally not. Maybe, generally maybe, maybe not. not. So what is the distinction in your mind as somebody who ran this department and who's looking at and cares about the integrity of these markets? Well, uh, that's, why, that's why I'm saying, okay, we can, we can discuss what are exactly the facts and circumstances around the publication right. of this tweet and the like. But in, but in the meantime, if you care about the markets and you care about investing, come on this program. Right. Tell people tell people why you did this from What's your up? lips. God bless you. We hope he does. Okay. But again, is there is there anything illegal about this or not? You may not like the way it looks. There, you know? there, there is nothing illegal about saying I like a stock. There are things illegal about saying, you know, I, I like a stock and taking activity in the marketplace that's designed to you know, drive behavior indicate that prices are rising and like those types of things Pump are illegal. Pumps aren't illegal necessarily. Pumps and dumps, but they can be and they cannot be. It depends on how you're doing them. Which is why, which is why a retrospective enforcement action is something we always need to do when there is illegal behavior. But we also need to call it out and say, hey, what's really happening here? Why is this going on? And that's that I think and, is, and is particularly important. And what's your concern? I mean, if, when you look at this, you worry about the retail investor who follows in. You worry about the short yeah, sellers well, who get squashed. Well, let's, let's take a step back. We're, we're doing a bad job for our retail investors. We're doing a really bad job because you have two choices. You can invest in an S&P 500 index-like product where 30 percent of your returns are driven by six stocks. And any kind of stock picking in, in that really doesn't matter as you go down the spectrum of public companies. Mm -hmm. We're also not bringing enough companies into the public market. So you have that choice, which is kind of a I'm joining the herd mentality, or you have these speculative. That's, that's what a retail investor sees. Retail investor sees, I've got that. I'm with the herd no matter what, which is not, not bad. Or I've got these speculative you know, meme stocks, zero date options, levered ETFs, those types of things where you're, get, you're trending from trading to gambling. And if you're not a professional, you're gambling. So you worry that this ends badly? Yeah. 
I, I think it, I think it's a, the integrity of our marketplace, but it's it's really a broader issue. We are shrinking the amount of investment opportunities on a relative basis for our retail investors. Mm -hmm. 80% of the companies that have over $100 million in revenue are private now. We've gone from 8,500 8, public companies How do you to fix below 3,000. What's causing that? What's creating that problem? The, the, it's, it's driven by many factors. It's a dynamic result of capital available for private, but it's mostly driven by the regulatory hurdles to be a public company. It's an interesting perspective. Um, Jay, thank you. Jay Clayton. Thanks. I find it amusing that Mr. Clayton struggles to pin the reason why many private companies today refuse to go public. Perhaps it's because we do not have real supply and demand in the public markets, and market makers doubling as hedge funds can pump infinite liquidity of any given security into the public market, targeting any company they dislike and profiting off of the depreciation of a company's share price through shorting on the hedge fund side of their business. Seriously, what company in their right mind would go public and expose their company to such a dangerous liability? Many companies today are refusing to enter the public markets because of exactly what is happening with GameStop and AMC. If they can halt those stocks over 30 times in 24 hours, what's to stop the same fate from happening to other companies? The real issue is that we have a public market that does not function based on true supply and demand dynamics. Rather, we have a market that is plagued by market makers providing quote, infinite liquidity of any stock they choose, while simultaneously being able to short those very same stocks on the hedge fund side of their business. So with all this in mind, and with the SEC asleep at the wheel, why would any company want to go public and expose their company to such a risk? That is the real problem.